Okay, so my name is Stephen Ramage. I'm from the Group on Earth Observations, known as GEO. Uh, we work with about 120 countries, something close to a thousand national government agencies, and we're helping them all understand how to use Earth observations for uh, research, policy decisions, and action. So we do a lot more than that, but I'll cover that as we go through the, the rest of the stuff. Um, what I'm going to do is just go through our, um, our panelists. We wanted 10, but we only managed to get six or seven, so um, that was a joke. Right, so we'll start with you, Will. If everyone just give your uh, brief intro of who you are, and then we'll, we'll get started on the discussion. Great stuff. My name is Will Caddell. I run a company called Spark Geo. I moved to uh, British Columbia 20 years ago, and I, I, I got lost, and I haven't come home yet. Um, uh, we do a lot of geospatial work. Typically, we were serving the US tech sector with uh, the creation of data pipelines and custom geospatial products. We're doing that more and more so now, but we're building custom pipelines for satellite remote sensing opportunities. So we're looking for objects and we're monitoring the landscape and we feel that where, uh, where landscapes change and where humans move, that's, that's the, the, the center point for value creation. Great. So I'm Ed Asaley. I'm uh, CEO of Zulu Forest Sciences and we uh, help well, essentially, we provide landowners and landholders of various stripes with an integrated view of their natural capital opportunities. And we do that because we really combine a group of scientists, uh, uh, engineers, uh, financiers, and, and, and financial structuring experts, and land managers. And we've essentially brought those disciplines together to really help provide that integrated view so that we can originate high-quality projects uh, that suit the interests of the landholder, but also suit the interests of other stakeholders, including the community, the wider environment, but also, of course, investors uh, who are looking for bankable projects. Okay. Hello, my name is Mariam Crichton. I'm the Group Managing Director of 4Earth Intelligence. 4EI uses space data for the betterment of humans and the planet. We work on all sorts of environmental and social impact projects with the predominant use of Earth observation. And I spend most of my time in our business unit that focuses on solutions for sustainable finance. Uh, we're here to bring radical transparency to sustainable finance, uh, particularly for the audience um, here. So um, institutional investors, wealth managers, hedge funds, and... Um, of the voluntary carbon market, we are supporting um, uh, DFIs, uh, investors, and uh, projects, and project developers. Um, through technical uh, support in monitoring, reporting, and verification, but also in the early development phase of a project in establishing the baseline and risk projects and, and things like that. Thanks. Ian? Hi, everyone. I'm Ian Woodhouse. So I'm here uh, on behalf of Earthblocks. So Earthblocks is an Edinburgh-based uh, company that builds a, a software product called Earthblocks, which is the simplest easiest, quickest way to access vast amounts of geospatial data, including global satellite data. And last but not least. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Craig Mills. I'm the CEO of Visuality. Um, a lot of the knowledge that underpins mon monitoring of projects, monitoring of the environment, uh, maybe 10 years ago when Visuality started, was, was in the hands of a lot of scientists and research institutes and um, non-profits and so in that time we've spent um, 10 years turning that science into digital projects um, which are typically open um, for the world so think of if you know this space think of Global Forest Watch, Global Fishing Watch, anything with watch in the name um, <laughs> and then probably in the last maybe two or three years we've found ourselves um, uh, getting a lot of interest from companies coming to us to say, how do we use this open knowledge, this open information in, in, our, in our companies? How do we transform our companies using this information? So maybe in the last maybe three years, uh, where before we were trying to convince scientists to create usable, well-designed technology, now we're trying to bring that into companies and um, where they actually focus quite often on the consumer and less on, on the planet. Now we're trying to switch it around with companies. So, Nice Great. to be here. Thank you very much. 
So can I just have a, a show of hands? The last panel talked about remote sensing. Is that entirely clear to all of you? Do you all know what remote sensing means? Who doesn't? Who doesn't know? Okay, so there are so there are some of you. Um, so we're we're going to talk a lot here on this panel about Earth observation. So, um, Mariam, can you give us a a brief sort of face yeah, so of, I'll of give Earth you, observation? Yes, I'll give you. You all seem to be so knowledgeable in this room already. Just a few people. Uh, for those that don't know, um, Earth observation. Um, we straddle the space sector and the geospatial mapping geo sector, and uh, most of what we do will be working with taking the sector split into upstream and downstream. Upstream are the people in the space sector who put the rockets up and put the satellites up, um, and we're the downstream, most, of the, most companies here. We take the satellite imagery and we analyse, interpret it uh, to give you insights through um, satellite imagery. But Earth observation is more than just remote sensing. There's, there's many remote sensing techniques that we use, including ground-based techniques. Um, in a nutshell, what we can do for you is, like the name says Earth observation, we can tell you what's here on the planet now. We can tell you what's here in the last 20 years or so or more. And we can provide that change intelligence to give you some historical trend analysis. And we can give you ongoing reporting. Uh, you know, some, we, we, the technology is here. That's the key message today. We can observe a point on the planet twice a day. Or if you want quarterly reporting or annual reporting, it's all there. It's just cost. And we can go down to 30 centimetres in resolution now. So we can, you know, spot sea turtles, you name it. The technology is here. Thank you. Does anyone have anything else to add or anything else you think for this audience in terms of Earth observations? I think it's just worth saying that, um, just, to, just to make a dif differentiation to some extent between us, we are users definitely of ge geo um, spatial data and um, Earth observation data uh, in many forms, but we are much more of a solution provider. So we're very much more about actually applying that to really understand a particular problem. Um, the particular problem might be, is this land degraded? Is it suitable for planting trees? Uh, if you were to plant trees on this land, what are the right trees to plant? Um, are there any other biodiversity considerations you need to take into account? Uh, what's the soil like? Um, uh, is there a flood risk? Is there a uh, um, uh, soil erosion risk? Um, what can you do about it? Uh, and so on. And so, in a sense, it's asking questions of the data and really trying to bring best practice to uh, how we answer those questions, recognizing that the science is always evolving and standards are always evolving. So I think what's wonderful is that there is so much data, there is so much knowledge, but the whole space is growing very, very rapidly. Uh, and we're really just trying to keep up. <laughs> Ian, you? I was, I was just going to follow your, your um, intro there and ask the audience uh, two quick questions. Hands up if you already use satellite data. Hands up, that's quite a lot of you. Hands up if you don't use it, but you would like to. Sure, right. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we can all go home then, they're already doing it. That's, uh... but I, think, I think the definition was, you know, it's much broader than satellite data. I mean, your favorite thing, Ian, ground truthing. You know, I mean, there, there, is, there is a need to calibrate and validate what, what, what comes out. And we've heard a lot of people talking today about, uh, you know, verification and measuring and reporting and stuff.